I'm Victoria McLean and welcome to my channel. big indication of what I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I did ask you a lot if you would like to see how I made my jewellery jaws and I have done it for you so don't say I never do anything for you. <laughs> so if you'd like to see how I made my jewellery drawers then keep on watching. If you would like me to bring Hogwarts to you then why not subscribe to my channel. Let's get started. <gasps> As you can see, the colour of these drawers originally from Ikea for £17, very, very light wood, it's not treated, it's very normal, very natural, so it's very easily manipulated, very easily stained, and all I've used is a normal wood stainer. You can get as many, you can get all different colours of this, but I've gone for the dark brown. Um, I've used a, sp a normal sponge to apply the first layer. I did use two layers to make it darker, and then to get into those nooks and crannies, I used a brush on the inside for the edges. Very, very easy to do, but I advise you use gloves while you're doing it. Now again, I've done the same thing with every single item of this uh, of this set. I've done every single drawer. I've done the actual drawer themselves, and I've done the drawers on the inside and out. Um, you'll see why when I go into this more. Although saying that, I do do something later on where you can't even see the dark wood, um, so I didn't really need to use all of it, but I just enjoyed changing the colour of it. I think it was a lot of fun and very messy. Now to get the labels for the actual uh, drawers that I, I, I use. I literally just googled labels, potion labels. There is so many on Google Images and I just printed them off um, in colour, uh, which you don't have to do, you don't have to do it in colour, but I printed them off in colour um, on A4 paper and I chose the ones I wanted to use. I cut them all out and um, all different sizes, shapes and sizes and colours and I think the variety really helped bring these shelves to life and of course everyone loves potion labels, don't they? Then what I decided to do was I, I, I chose the labels I wanted to use in certain parts of the drawers. Now I do lift the camera up in a minute so you can see better, there we are. Um, so I chose the right labels that I wanted to use. I used a very, very thin, um, a, a, a normal PVA glue, so a normal school glue. Um, so it's like two parts glue, four parts water or, four, or three parts water. I needed the glue to still be not too thick, but thick enough for you to be able to do this properly. Now I'll explain in a bit why that is. Now PVA glue is brilliant for doing things like this. Everyone knows a bit of paper mashing is so much fun. However, depending on what you're doing, if you use too much water in your mixture, it can create terrible air bubbles if you're trying to do paper mache with larger pieces of paper. So small pieces of paper is fine. So small labels, you can use quite thin paper mache mixture of PVA glue and water. However, for something large, like this label I'm, I'm trying to stick on here, you can't have the mixture too thin or you'll have nothing but air bubbles underneath it and believe me, they are a pain in the ass to get rid of. So what I've done here is obviously I'm starting to put the glue on first. I do leave it a few seconds before applying the label properly. I don't think I do in this one, but I do later on. Because if you leave it get a little bit tacky, a little bit drier, the labels do stick better and you'll find you get less air bubbles under it. So that's a big tip for you. Now once I've applied the thin layer of glue, I put the label on and I start applying the PVA glue over the top of the label. Now as I said, air bubbles can be a pain in the arse, 
but there is a trick to getting rid of them. If you gently lift up the label, which I do do in a minute, gently lift up part of it and then go back down with the brush. It's like wallpapering really, they're so big they might as well be wallpaper. Um, and as you go down the label you find that you actually do end up pushing a lot of the air bubbles out. So that's a big help. For the smaller labels though, you don't need to do this necessarily unless you are using too much water in your mixture. I do the rest to um, the top of the drawers and uh, just keep going. I do add a lot of labels to this, but I add so many labels and I do love my potion labels. You know I love my potion stuff. I've got my whole my whole um, shelf dedicated to my potions. Um, but everybody, I think every Harry Potter fan loves a bit of potions, don't they? So I do put a lot on the top. Um, again, this is the first time doing it, so I need, I, I was really playing about with it. Now I do the same thing to the both left and the right side, choosing my labels first perf um, carefully because obviously I want them to fit nicely. I love that poison label, that's brilliant. And as obviously I go through and I do plenty of different labels. I think I didn't put enough glue in that bit so that's why I took the label back down again. But uh, as you can see I am bending over some of those labels at the top as well because you can do that, it's much easier. But for any labels that overlap I advise you cut them first. Now moving on to the other side of the drawers as you can see it's looking pretty good. To be honest I wish I had left it like this. I don't think I, I, what I should have used what I do use later on you'll see um, but it darkens it or it fades it a lot. I actually like the uh, the old colour of these labels and the way the colours are coming through um, so I wish I had left it like that but as you can see I'm going through trying to see which label is the best one because I did have a lot of labels to choose from. They haven't been thrown away obviously I haven't wasted them they're still very much in my drawers in case I need them at a later date. I love creating things, so I might make more of these later on. But again, I've already checked which labels I want. Again, you can see I'm, I'm bending over some labels at the top to create a little bit of a, of a more like a 3D look. And then I do the exact same thing to the front of the drawers. All of these drawers I do the same thing to. Um, some of them I think you only have a few labels, other I put quite a lot of labels on so I'm, I'm really kind of mixing it up and trying to make it look very different and still colourful. Again, as you can see, I do all the labels, checking to see which ones I want first because it is a little bit of a pain if you do try and take the labels off once you've stuck them down, although PVA glue is not too bad. And as you can see, the label there, Poison, on the right hand, oh, sorry, on the left hand side, I've actually trimmed that so it fits better on the box um, because it's a pain in the bum if they just keep flicking up all the time. See, there we are, I'm cutting it, as you can see, I'm cutting part of the label to get it to fit on the largest shelf there, the largest drawer, sorry, um, but that drawer was a lot of fun to do. Because this one was nicknamed the Drawer of Desire, um, as you saw from a previous video, if you haven't seen that, check out the link above. Um, I do really think about this drawer because it is the last one, it's the one where all the expensive pieces are going to go into and as you can see I am cutting them to size because I didn't want the hassle. If you start lifting them or folding them down underneath the drawers, you're going to have a little bit of friction there when you open the drawers and shut the drawers later on and eventually these labels will start to come undone. So it's best to cut them instead of just bending them over, much much easier and uh, much less hassle later on and it ensures your drawers will look pristine from the day you did it um, until the end of its life, whenever that will be. Now this is where it got really tricky. Um, this is the obviously first time I've ever used anything like this. This is felt, it's sticky back plastic felt. 
So a self-adhesive felt from Amazon. Harry loved it as well. You can see his hands coming in there. Um, this was black, but you can get all different colours. Um, and what I did is I used that then for the inside of the drawers to make it look and feel like a proper jewellery drawer. Um, it was fine after a while, but it did take me a little while to get used to it. So as you can see, I've already done a cup already, so I know what I'm doing by this point. But what I do is I cut out a... Um, a template if you like of the inside of the drawers the base as you can see there that's the base the underneath of it was the perfect fit so I use that part for the inside of the drawer and then I use that white piece of paper then or card if you've got card is even better but I use that piece of paper then to use as a template on the self adhesive part of the um, felt so as you can see obviously I've already done my little uh, cutouts there for each part and I'm showing you that I've already cut them out. It was easier for me to cut out that little notch there bef um, before I stuck it in than after I'd stuck it in. It would have been really messy. So it was best to do it beforehand. And then obviously here I'm now using, this is the, this is the base uh, template and I'm finding where best to put it on the felt to try and um, minimize the amount of wastage because it was about 17 pound a roll. And it was fairly big roll. I have got some left, but only a little bit but it was big enough for me to do all the drawers with. I was panicking, I'd have to buy more, but £17 a roll is actually quite expensive. But again, they had all different colours, So, but I wanted to go for black because so I thought that was more potionsy or purple, but they didn't have the type of purple I wanted. And as you can see, then obviously I've, I'm cutting out the area that I've just drawn around, ready for the drawers. Um, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fit perfectly. The best way to deal with it is to, before you take the sticky back plastic off, is put it into the inside of the drawer to check that it fits first. Um, that is the best way of not wasting any. I was petrified of wasting any felt. I didn't. I was really pleased. The only bits I wasted were the tiny bits like here that I cut off because it was slightly too big or, or, you know, or I didn't cut it right or so on. But they were minimised. They were tiny little pieces that I ended up putting in the bin. So I was really proud of myself for that. I'd never done anything like this before. It's quite nerve-wracking. This was done so long ago, mind. Those scissors that I'm using to cut came apart months ago. Um, so this has been sat on my computer all this time, ready to show you guys. So as you can see, I've put it inside the drawer before taking the sticky back plastic off to make sure that it does fit perfectly. So what I do here is I actually take off part of this, the, the top of the sticky back, uh, the paper, so a little bit of the adhesive is showing. This is so if I do make a mistake, I can literally pick it out again and then put it back in again. So I want to make sure that it fits perfectly first. Um, and then obviously the best way to do that is take a little bit of it off and then stick it down, make sure it's in the right place, make sure the whole thing fits nicely, and then gently push it down ready so it's not going to move. And then what I do after that is I very, very, very slowly take away the back of the sticky back plastic very gently, a little bit at a time, stick it down a little bit more, stick it down a little bit more until the whole thing is stuck down. And that is how I've done it through all of the drawers. Again, I do the same thing to all four sides, making sure that it's all in the right place. And I do that for all of these six drawers that I have. Um, I don't show you the last drawer because I think I was getting to the point where I wanted to throw it through the window by that point because it was such a big piece. But it turned out brilliant. I'm so glad I did it. Now this is what I wish I hadn't used, dust wash. 
Um, it makes things look dusty and old. Now, I, I did try a little bit at first and I thought it looked really nice, but after seeing the colour, I preferred the way it looked before. So it did look aged and it did put an extra bit of like a varnish over the top of these labels so they didn't come undone. Um, but I, I, I do now wish I hadn't done it. Um, I think it looked better without. But you learn as you go along. To be fair, the dust wash is a tiny bottle, but it does go a long way, so it does last. And here is the finished product. I am actually really pleased with it. I think it looks so good. Um, I want to do something inside it now to create little sections for my jewellery to be placed. But it's I'm so proud of it. I may actually make a few more. But £17 from Ikea, these drawers are really, really good value. But we'll have to wait until the lockdown is finished to be able to order them again. If you like them, let me know in the comments below. And are you going to give this a go yourself? So there you have it. That is how these were made. I really enjoyed making them. I loved it and it didn't take me very long at all. It took me about a day, um, but I really enjoyed it. I think I'm gonna do something else soon. I have ideas, but you'll have to wait and see. But then we'll also have to wait until Ikea opens up again, because obviously it's closed due to the lockdown. I hope you guys are all keeping safe where you are. We, as a little update, we are perfectly safe. Remember to stay home, wash your hands on a regular basis, and maintain social distancing if you do have to leave your home for any particular reason or any obviously um, important reason. Uh, again, we are safe. We're continuing our lovely walks around our area. We did today, went on a bike ride. That was a lot of fun. I did not ride the bike. I'll have you know, Harry did, okay? If you would like me to bring Hogwarts to you, then why not subscribe to my channel? If you like this video, then make sure you hit the like button. And so you don't miss any more of my videos, hit the notification bell as well. Until next time, take care. I love you all. I'll speak to you very soon. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. <laughs> Press the like button, the notification bell so you don't miss any more of my videos. Until next time, take care. I love you all. I'll speak to you very soon.